All right, there's a few brass parts on here, like this screw, this dial, and another screw on here. And I have some brasso here, and I'm just going to touch it up a little bit with some steel wool, wipe it down. All right, I'll call that good. Now these wood handles are in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of paint on here. They're a little bit dirty. I'm just gonna take and clean them off with a little bit of, yeah, I think it's about, you know, triple zero is what it comes out to be. And some mineral spirits just to clean it off. And then I'm probably gonna put some wipe on poly on there. In pretty good shape for 85 years old, right? I don't know, it's looking good right now. Let's give it a chance to dry. All right, let's start to put this together now. and the blade is not sticking out yet. So now we're gonna put the handles on, on the front and back. Handle on the back. All right, now that the plane is all assembled and I've got everything adjusted pretty much, the handles are back on, I'm going to and to uh, pull the blade back just shy of the mouth or the opening and with the uh, lever and the blade locked, I'm going to give it a few more passes just to make sure it's completely flat with the pressure that the lever is going to place on the cast iron. It can sometimes throw it just a little bit out of flat and so you want to make sure it's flat on the sole after it's all assembled. Let me go grab a marker. What we do now is we just kind of mark it a bit. So you have a reference of where you're at. And you can see everything is gone at the uh, toe. Most of it's coming free on the heel and it's very, just about as flat as, as you'll get. But I'll take, do it just a little bit more. Let me clean some of the stuff off of here. That's good. One more test. That is to take a really flat rule like this old kind of vintage Stanley and we just take a look at the bottom here. What I do is I'm going to hold this up to this light. I have a light straight ahead. I'm going to check if I can see daylight in between there at any point. And we are good. This hand plane has a flat sole now and all that's left to do is to sharpen the blade. So let me take that out of there.
All right, here I have this old Veritas blade angle, you know, to help in sharpening. And on this portion of it, this helps you set the angle of the blade. Uh, it has different uh, degrees right here, you know, 15, 25, 35, 20, 30, whatever. Now, a Stanley number four should have a 25 degree. So you take this. And when you've reached 25 degrees, you'll know because this will stop, right? You lock it in. And you have your plane angle locked in. From there, you just keep even pressure. You move the plate blade backward. I'm using that kind of worn down sandpaper and you can see that the angle is set pretty accurate. Keep even pressure using this worn sandpaper and I draw this towards myself. Making sure that the roller on the bottom makes contact with the sandpaper and rolls along, keeping it at that exact 25 degree angle until I get the full bevel shiny on the bottom. You can see it's not exactly all shiny yet, but just a few strokes here it almost is. We have just a little ways to go right here. Probably just a couple more. And we are there. So let me remove this out of here. Uh, the back is pretty flat. I'll flatten it just a bit more. Just to remove the burr. Okay, we've placed some 1500 on here. Uh, that's feeling really sharp right now, even though it's only 1500. Actually, if you want it like razor sharp, you should get it up to about, I don't know, you can get it up to 8,000 on some Japanese water stones. And I may do that in the future. But right now, I think I'll use this to like chamfer edges and things like that. And you can see that is it's like almost mirror with only 1500. Get the back just to take any burr off of there. All right, let's put this back together again. This little lever right here adjusts the plane from one side to the other depending on if it's even at the tip and you can tell if it's even at the tip if you take and you sight right down the front of it and you can see the blade popping up just a little bit and you move that back and forth till it's even I'm looking at it right now my own self so and I think I've got it where I want it just a slight bit of blade sticking out the end maybe I want it just a little bit less huh Take off a small shaving. There it is. Let me move this. Oh, there it is, my Stanley number four. It's back to where I wanted it. It's uh, in good shape now. It's sharpened, it's ready to go. The sole is flat, the blade is sharp, the handles are uh, you know, touched up a bit. I didn't do anything on the paint because I think that would be too much of a contrast to the rest of the plane right now you know i think that it looks good together the way that it is why don't i test this out on a scrap of wood for some show and tell 
All right, just for a short test, I have a uh, clamp to the edge of my bench here, a piece of wood. We'll just try to take a shaving or two, see how that works. And the chip breaker seems to be doing what a chip breaker does, which is curl up the shavings that are set for really thin. Okay, they're coming up out of the throat right here. All right, well, that looks like a project well done. I'm happy with it. And uh, something tells me that this won't be my last hand plane. So I found this Stanley Bailey number six while I was in Temecula, California for the low price of $65. And I'll tell you, it's a keeper. So I'll probably tune that up just a little bit because it's in really good shape and put that into service also. All I need now is a number eight and a block plane, a low angle block plane and a low angle rabbiting plane. And I think I'll call it good with the hand planes. Take it easy people. If you like the video, please subscribe and hit the like button.